Welcome to the Soulish Podcast. My name is Whitney Apke and I'm your host. On this episode, you get little old me and we're going to be talking about honoring your sacred space and creating a self-care and a healing environment so that you can truly integrate and heal because that's what it's all about. So let's dive in. I find this topic to be very poignant <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, sacred space is also something that uh, I just, I feel like I, I'm new to the concept because I grew up in a Christian household where our door was always open. Someone could call and we stop everything for that phone call. I didn't really have a sacred safe space in that I could choose um, who was allowed in and what took place and what what's happening in the space, right? And so like, because if you're a pastor, you're kind of on call, right? You're always available to be of service. I grew up with that mentality. And so I realized that in adulthood, I continued that same kind of archetype of living where it's like, if a friend calls, I answer. If uh, someone wants to come over, I stop everything. I cancel all plans. They can come over. And I just realized like, Ooh, this does not serve. This does not support my journey and you know it's not selfish and it's not narcissistic it just simply is balance and wholeness and healing and i know that that can be kind of a disposition for a lot of healers is that um they don't necessarily have a sacred space um where they are not on call and not available you know and so very interesting and i think it's interesting whether you're a healer or intuitive or spiritual or religious or what business you know person <laughs> and like what mother or father whatever it is you are you know whatever it is you do i think it's really interesting to look at where we need to create more sacred space in our life where we have um disconnected disassociated and where we um may not be honoring our process and our journey and what what we can do in order to do that, in order to kind of just pivot or shift a little bit. Um, I can be the extreme and I can go like full on right or full on left and I can just like quickly pivot and be an all or nothing. And so I've learned the balance too of like, sometimes it's just like little tweaks in our routine and that can just really serve, but it's not necessarily taking away from the rest of your life, you know, or routine or, you know, even your connections with others or however that is, you know, it doesn't need to be some big um, ordeal, big shift or change, um, but sometimes it is needed, you know, and so it's like understanding that and learning that and, uh, and honoring that, whatever that looks like for you. So you know, it's funny, I realized just a simple little thing um, that in every apartment I've ever had, I've never hung anything up. I just realized I'm always ready to move out of the apartment that I'm in and move into another apartment. Like I never make the apartment home. Like I have furniture and I have you know, decor, like little things on like the side tables to my bed. And, you know, like I have things in my entertainment center where my TV is like I have crystals, I have books, I have things, right? It's not like I don't have stuff uh, that is mine. Um, but I just realized like the simple thing of like hanging things, you know, on walls. Um, I've never done that. And just kind of always thinking like this isn't home. And I, when I recognized that, I, I think I was listening to a different podcast episode and they were talking about that of like, you know, do you just kind of like live always like ready to move and never feeling grounded and that's being expressed in your home. And I was like, oh my gosh. So part of me creating a sacred space was realizing like, I need to own this space more. Like I need to see this space as my home, my space, I own it. Um, and that may look like I'm, you know, putting things on walls, you know, hanging things or, or it may not, you know, but however that is expressed needs to be expressed. I need to acknowledge that I may not be grounding in where I am, which is why I feel what I feel. Um, so simple, simple little things like that. Sometimes sacred space is just creating like a self-care, self-love routine. 
And um, that may be both nighttime and morning. It might be how you start your day. It might just be how you live your days, you know? Um, I love, uh, I think it's Brother Andrew Lawrence uh, practicing the presence of God. Um, he was a monk and he just had this profound revelation that just became his legacy that we are never disconnected from God. And so the idea of like praying for your meal or going to church and praying that then after that happens, that just life goes on until you go back and you reconnect in church or you reconnect, you know, in before you eat or whatever your ritual is, right? He was like, that's beautiful. It's not wrong, but you can practice the presence of God always. You can be in constant communication with God. You never have to disconnect. It never has to just be a moment, right? Here or there where you're connecting in or you're having a sacred self-care or space, you know, cultivating that, that you can actually live in that um, connection and communication always. So what I realized, because I, I think initially when I um, kind of shifted up my belief system, you know, became more open that I I very quickly held on to like whatever ritual I was seeing people do on Instagram. I was like, oh, okay, well, let me try connecting with God in that way. And I would try it and I'd go, oh, yeah, you know, like I legit felt something there, you know, a little tingle, a little something, something, you know, happening and uh, felt heat, you know, or like the energy shift around the space the same way that it would when I would sing worship music or, you know, something like that. I'd feel the same presence. I'm like, that's really interesting. I'm feeling the same Holy Spirit, you know, in this, like, you know, holding this crystal or doing this chant, you know, this satnam you know chant thing and uh from this other religion or belief system and yet i'm feeling the same connection and then i started to realize like wow okay like these are just different ways of connecting and what i experienced and grew up with within was not the only way which is what i was taught right this is the only way to do this and i realized oh my gosh you can totally believe, you know, this or sing in this language or do this thing or chant this prayer or, you know, hold this crystal and breathe and you can feel the same presence of God. And that was such a revelation for me. Like that's when I started not fearing exploring things was when I started to feel the same presence of God that I had grown up within and knew, like knew so well. I mean, I was a worship leader, so I would lead worship and facilitate that same presence of God. And the fact that I could do that in a foreign experience, you know, was like shocking, shocking to me. It was a total eye opener. And, um, and so I just like, I think for me, it was just like this revelation that like, I can create this connection like i truly am never disconnected because that was also another fear of like i'm leaving my belief system that i know of i don't know if i'll return i might return but i'm leaving my belief system i'm kind of walking away from this in a way and i'm exploring outside of this not saying that this is the only way anymore that there may be other ways and that's been scary up until now um and i i just i yeah i stopped fearing kind of being open and considering another way of being another belief system another you know way of life um what it looked like to connect and and then on top of that self-care and like what that looked like in cultivating a space um also changed because you know we have a lot of like different self-care rituals that we can do you know I mean, the, is it like the seven step Korean skincare, which is legit, um, but like, you know, have three toners or sometimes they, I think they actually have seven toners. Um, it may be bigger than a seven step Korean <laughs> skincare routine, but like, you know, you can do that. And you can also just be like the chick that like literally washes your face and puts on moisturizer, you know, like, and that's that. Um, you could be a no makeup, no skincare chick, just like straight up water. And that's, that's all you do you know, like to each his own. Um, but what I realized is we can try all these different practices, but sometimes, like sometimes for me, breath work has not served. It's actually caused um, a spike in cortisol 
and it's caused more of a nervous system reaction, uh, not in a good way, than just simply being quiet and still and at peace and just in the silence, just being in it and not having to do anything, no breath work, nothing, just in silence connecting. And and sometimes nature is what I need, but sometimes I also need more than nature. Sometimes I need the gem. Sometimes I need to like physically move energy um, and feel strong and powerful. And that's, that's my self-care. Sometimes the sauna, I'm like in there for like a solid 30 minutes. And some days I'm in there for 10 and that's like, that's it. That's all my body can take. So it's really interesting, like as we navigate self-care and what this looks like, um, creating a sacred space within us and, and creating a sacred space outside of us in order to serve whatever it is um, that we need and whatever is supportive for us and our families or our tribe or our people, or our community, um, our space, our neighborhood outside of us. Um, I think it's really important to be connected enough to see and to feel what truly is serving you in this moment. So as I kind of lay out like my day-to-day self-care healing, you know, routine, just connection routine um, and my sacred space, I just want to give this little disclaimer that this might not be for you. Like there may be different things that you need to add in or different things that you need to not do at all. Um, and every day is different for me, sometimes depending on what I'm experiencing in life, like sometimes I need something different and you're no different. So you're unique, your journey is unique, your journey is sacred and creating your sacred space is unique and it's unique to you alone. So I think it's really cool when we share things, but I think we're also can be in this space of like accumulation and accumulating, oh, she does that and she loves her life or has a has a partner or he like is super successful or, you know, like we can like say like they do this and I don't do this and they have this thing that I don't have. Therefore, I'm going to do that thing to have that thing, you know, and that's not always true. That's not always like actually what's going on. Um, but I do think when we resonate with something or when something feels um, in alignment or feels like something we want to try and it's exciting and it, it resonates, I think that's a great sign to like, give it a go, give it a try, but also don't get super like, um, strict on it, that it's like something that you need to do always. It may not be that way. It may be for a season. It may be never. It may be for life. It could be for multiple things. So I think understanding that and acknowledging that is also important. So for the last couple of months, I've I've, uh, I've been in a really interesting transition, interesting season of life, and um, I've given myself a lot of room and compassion and space. And so where just like six months ago, I was extremely routined out, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I was in the gym and uh, super disciplined, would wake up at six and be in the gym by 6.37 latest and would work out for about an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours. I had a very strict diet in what I was eating and what I was doing and um, was trying to you know, accumulate muscle, lose fat. And, and it was working in some instances, but then it actually kind of flipped on me and um, created more problems than actually solving them uh, because ultimately I was not giving myself space and room to flow and I was disregarding my system, my body and uh, the time of the month and all of that. I was totally disregarding that kind of operating like when I was on birth control, just always being kind of very like neutral and always kind of like here, you know, not like doing a reg and here, I mean like just flatlining whether whereas like for women we we go up and down and we have spikes and we have dips and uh we have moments of kind of being in the middle for a little bit but we really like we vary and every woman is also very unique and different so not every woman is the same and so i wasn't i wasn't paying attention to that and that actually created more disconnection than it created connection but it also was beautiful at the same time because i was gaining in strength and i was loving it and i was so excited and it was really encouraging to see what my body could do so there was a lot of good in it but i recognized where i was not necessarily creating a sacred space because i wasn't allowing for that to 
adapt and move and flow and truly support me where I was and where I was at in that moment. So at the same time, you know, I can swing very much the opposite way and become very undisciplined and very much in the flow and not really have a routine. And so I've been kind of like, you know, kind of moving around this. So for me right now, it looks like I, um, I work out in the gym three to four times a week. And, um, but I always kind of start the day when the weather has now it's like spring is sprung. So it's very nice in the morning and I can go out and I can just get outside. First thing, uh, little Winston and I can go on a walk and we can just hit nature like first thing in the morning. Um, the river is now high. And so it's been beautiful to like, be able to like dip the toes and, uh, get out in nature and smell the blooms and just love that here in Colorado lilacs bloom around this time. And so it's just been beautiful and the summer is just gorgeous. So loving it, but also at the same time, still getting in the gym three to four times a week, but I don't have like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? Like I have a, like when, when it works for my schedule that day, um, that will be a workout gym day when it doesn't, when I have early morning meetings, um, then it's just simply a good long nature walk with Winston, um, exploring and touching everything I can touch and connect with and just breathing in fresh air, getting morning light, morning sun. And that's beautiful. Um, but also if I have a day where I feel very low energetically, the last thing I'm going to go in the gym and do is a full set of squats of, you know, like leg day, like just hit it with the kettlebells. If I'm feeling low energetically, that's also a time where I have chosen to opt for a walk, uh, a nature walk with Winston and getting out in nature and recharging that way. And that has helped me so much with like my cortisol, um, with my personal, like my hormone balancing, my nervous system, uh, fight or flight response. And that has really, really, really been super, super helpful um, to just acknowledge where my body feels and wh what it, where it's at, which could be stress related. It could be like lack of nourishment related. And so I'll kind of take that in and go, I think this is what I need. I need berries this morning. Like I need like a good, like couple handfuls of blueberries. Like I'm really feeling into that. And, and so instead of eggs, you know, I'll opt for blueberries and my homeopath has helped me so much with that because she's like just tune in to what like you feel like you need um, and really feel into it she's like because sometimes I'll like go for some cashews and I'm like Ugh. like <laughs> she just feels sick and she's like yeah no cashews like my body does not want cashews this morning but we would otherwise look at that and go oh, that's very healthy why wouldn't you eat them um, and she's like you just got to be intuitive to that level you have to be connected to that level where you're 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 connected in and you're creating this safe space within your body as well as outside of your body and really understand that it's not it's not necessarily always like has to be regimented out but then there's seasons of that where that's really great and beneficial and to each his own in everyone's journey but for me it's always really important first thing in the morning is to really feel into how i feel feel physically feel mentally feel emotionally feel energetically and spiritually. And that's really, really, really important to, to literally take a check because I feel like, you know, we've, after we've slept, we've come from the subconscious and we're coming back into the conscious realm. And there is kind of an in-between period where you're kind of in both a little bit, like you're just leaving one into the other. And I think that's a really great barometer to really be, to kind of get like a little insight into like how you feel subconsciously versus how you feel consciously if it's the same or if it's very different it's good to acknowledge that you know it's good to see like ah i feel this way in my subconscious but in my conscious i feel this way um and so i use that i honestly use that moment of i don't even sit up i just lay awake in bed and i will just lay there and i'll just kind of connect in how do i feel i always start with the body because that's like a great connection in of like huh like i have some aches and pains on my right side or i feel bloated or you know i my legs are sore from leg day the other day and it's day three and i'm still super super sore um so what do i need nourishment wise in order to help my body repair those muscles and um 
maybe maybe I don't have a very you know big breakfast if I'm bloated and feeling um, like my system is not it didn't fully digest or process what I ate for dinner. Sometimes like I'll I'll look at that and go ah my my tummy really didn't like that D, Dijon salmon you know that I had like it really didn't like the mustard last night you know like it's funny like sometimes like something will just kind of like not sit right and you're like well it was healthy and it was like totally organic and you know whatever. Um, it was healthy. It's considered healthy, but like my body still didn't like it. So I'll go, got it. Okay. So Dijon mustard. Yeah. We like any spicy mustard that's going to cause a lot of inflammation in my body. My body does not want that right now. It might want that like a year from now. And I might be in the space where I can do that, but not today. <laughs> so like, I'll look at that and I'll go, okay, body. So you have a lot of inflammation, you know, you're bloated from, from the Dijon salmon. So what do you need? And sometimes it's like, I just want water, just want water. Um, sometimes it's like, ooh, a matcha tea like feels really good. Or sometimes it's like blueberries, um, even whatever berries I can get my hands on. Um, and so I'll feel into that. Uh, I love this, um, I have this uh, vegetarian vegan book and they have this like beautiful like uh, breakfast salad, which I never thought to ever have a salad for breakfast. But it's like this beautiful like spinach uh, with strawberries and almonds and it just feels it looks and feels so alkaline, you know. Um, and so I actually had that after the Dijon salmon. And I was like, you know, I'm really feeling like that that spinach strawberry um, uh, and I think it has blueberries in it. Um, I don't know if I use blueberries, though, but um, almond you know sliced almonds like this just feels good with a little lemon on top you know that like sounded so good and i did it and i just oh like i felt like my body was like this is what we need to like move this in on out and like to calm the system down and um it just felt so good so sometimes it's like nope warm lemon water that's all i want and i won't eat until like maybe one or two um, sometimes it's, I need a hearty breakfast. I need that oatmeal with those eggs and egg whites, and I need something. I need something substantial. So I'll connect in with that. And then sometimes I'll ask like, okay, we're bloated. Is there anything connected with that? Or I'll even just kind of feel into thoughts around that, around how I feel in my body or how I feel energetically, um, in the body. And I'll go through like my thoughts, my feelings, and that usually leads me into like the energetics and how I feel in my space and how I feel as a collective and feeling into that. Um, and that's kind of how I connect in. And that's really how I determine like how the rest of my morning goes and what my morning routine is. Sometimes I go to the gym and I go and I use like the, they have a water massage chairs and I will go and I will just get a water massage and then I will go into the sauna for 30 minutes. Sometimes I'll walk on the treadmill or do the Stairmaster or something like that, but it is it is not what I used to do, you know, like uh, quickly warming up or doing sprints and then going in and doing like, you know, three, four uh, set squats and um, at like, you know, starting out at 185 and going up to like 245, 265 on good days. Uh, ovulation. Um, and then sometimes, you know, like it would just be like also like a crazy circuit, like kettlebell circuit or dumbbell circuit, um, where I'm like literally dying and like have to lay down before I decide to walk out of the gym. And so some days are not those days. And other days I'm like, oh my God, let's get it. You know, like let's go Viking, like Nordic, like, you know, Viking status. Um, let's channel the German, you know, the, the Native American in me and like the endurance and like, let's like get it today. And so like, I have those days too. Um, but I make sure that it's, it's totally something that my body and that my energy and my mind is connected with and honestly just lights me up. It's something that I'm just like, oh, I'm like lit up by. I'm so excited for sometimes just the idea of getting out in nature and, and smelling and dirt and water. Like sometimes like that's all that is like super exciting and feels super yummy. And so that's kind of like how I just begin my day of like, what do I need? What is the sacred space and container that I need in order for me to 
be supported to do what I want to do and to accomplish what I want to accomplish? What is it that I need to do? And also as I'm healing and integrating things and, um, you know, processing different things that have, have happened, sometimes working out super intense is exactly what I need. And then other times it's like, I need to go walk. I need to just go walk and think, um, or call my mama and talk to her about it. Um, and get her advice and her wisdom. So each is a variable. I think also my, like how I live my life, I definitely like in the day, in the work day, um, I'm getting up several times and I'm walking outside. I have a beautiful balcony and I get to look at the front range. Um, Southwest, I get to look at, um, so the front range of the Colorado Rockies. And, um, and sometimes just looking at the clouds passing and sometimes listening to the birds chirping and flying around. We have hawks and falcons over by me. We have a little falcon family up in the roof um, above me. And then we have um, a hawk, a hawk trio. Um, and, uh, and so they're always constantly going around and the birds get all upset. <laughs> like we have swallows. I love swallows. So I love watching them just glide and, and, and move so effortlessly. Like they don't even, you know, flip their wings. Like they just like glide through the air with ease. And so I watch that and I just, I literally just take that in and go, God, I can be like a swallow today. I can glide, you know, I don't have to be like really like flitting the wings around trying to make shit happen today I can glide um with ease and flow and um that really 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 helps me to just continue to like connect in um because we can be so digital and we can be so like computer focused and um nature really helps me to disconnect from that and reconnect with my original nature which is also nature um, I am not a computer. I'm a human flesh being, right? So helps me to connect in with that. And um, my evening routine, I usually do something fun. So we'll definitely do like another evening walk, especially in the summer. It's hot by day for the little fluffy guy. And so we'll do like a nice, beautiful, lovely evening walk and um, get to sniff all the sniffs and say hi to all the other doggy neighbors in the neighborhood. And um, and I usually will kind of like disconnect from work and the day and all the things and I'll just kind of like let it go and let it be for tomorrow like whatever is whatever is needed tomorrow will be and um, I usually do something fun so I've been reading um, women who run with wolves I've been reading the gospel the Essene gospel of peace um, and then I love like my good like fantasy fiction novels like around like shifters and werewolves and all the things like different magical worlds and all of that and um, so I'll sometimes like read a little I'll be reading in that book uh, whatever book I'm reading currently and just kind of like disconnect you know from the day the work day and all the conversations and I'll just kind of get into like a some sort of something that's a different story or something that is expansive something that is fun to kind of like bring out the magic again the the dreamer in me the um fantasizer you know like it'll just help me to get super imaginative and um that really helps me de-stress personally uh because i'm not thinking of processes and logistics and all of those things i'm thinking of like oh like you know the world of the impossible and that helps me to go into my dream state um where i can connect spiritually which is limitless and that really helps me in my sleep to have um beautiful like spiritual you know, energetic dreams where I'm like, I'm traveling worlds and I'm going places and having conversations with ETs and like, you know, dreaming up things like that. <laughs> um, being the first woman to have like ET, like ET contact, like walking with aliens, <laughs> having, having really cool conversations with aliens, um, higher beings. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's just fun, just whatever is like magical and limitless and, um, brings out the dreamer in me. And, uh, and that really helps me to kind of just de-stress and reconnect with the limitless, the liminal, the, the expansiveness, um, you know, and, uh, kind of get out of whatever the routine was for the day, whatever the work was or the requirements or obligations were for the day. 
And oftentimes I also think water is such a sacred medicine. And um, I love to take like a morning and an evening shower. For me, I'm a Cancer, Sun, Pisces, Moon, Aquarius rising. So lots of water. And um, water is such a conduit that oftentimes I feel that I am free of the energy of the day, of the conversations of the day, of the stress of the day, whatever it was, just by taking a shower or a bath and rinsing off, you know, the, the physical act of rinsing off and cleansing um, really helps me to reset energetically. So that's how like in the day to day I create space, I do meditate throughout the day or um, take time aside to connect in with spirit, the divine. Um, and that just kind of I don't have like a routine with that. I think after kind of coming around to especially brother Lawrence, Andrew Lawrence and practicing the presence of God, I just realized I would like to have a continuous connection and continuous conversation. Um, sometimes that means that I do take time to to solidly go in and connect in with the divine, like intentionally in that moment, create space, nothing around me, nothing going on. And then sometimes I'm like, I'm, I'm weaving in my you know conversation with spirit with god throughout my work and throughout you know whatever whatever i'm doing if it's the meal i'm making or the gym sash or uh the massage chair or uh walking with my dog in nature you know it, it could be multiple different ways but i just i really love cultivating that continuous connection with god and communication with god um, and that helps me to feel like everything is connected in that sense because I can see the connection because I'm remaining plugged in throughout the day. Um, if you're somebody who needs like breakaway times and that really is supportive and it's kind of hard to think of like having a continuous connection with God, I highly recommend having a morning and evening routine as well as if you can fit it in fit it in in your lunch break or some mid morning uh, 15 10 minute break that you have with work if possible or maybe it's afternoon um, and taking a moment to connect in and that may be connecting in with your breath sometimes that's like the really easiest way to really connect in with your spirit is to connect in with the breath because you're basically feeling the unseen and you're feeling it enter your body and exit your body and you're feeling the nourishment of that, of oxygen coming in and feeling your body respond with like a deep intentional breath. And sometimes that helps us connect in with the spiritual, right? And the um, the unseen, the limitless, the liminal and bringing that into our physical space and knowing that that supply will never run dry, that that supply will never run out that you'll never take a breath in and not be able to receive nourishment from it. That the breath, the air is, is your, always your source of life. And um, even if you don't have food, even if you don't have access to water, clean water, you have your breath, right? So that's something that when I get really fear of lack or fear of scarcity or fear of not enough or anything like that, or feeling like, oh, like this could be taken, this could be stolen, I could lose my job, I could lose, you know, whatever it is, the bank won't give me my money, you know, whatever it is, I always come back to the breath and not even breath work, just like, just taking a breath and breathing in, just connecting it in with that, like I have breath. This is what I have, I'm good. You know, so sometimes that's all we need. That's all we need to connect and to create a sacred space. It can be that simple. It can be complex and have routine and have no routine. And it can just simply be taking a breath. And I think the more that we connect, the more we heal. I know I probably say that in every episode, but it's true. The more we connect and the more connectedness we have within ourselves, the more we heal, the more we shift, transmute, and the more wholeness, embodiment, right, integration of of uh, our authentic self, our, um, you know, who we are at our core, our soul, you know, that our soul essence gets to be expressed in this physical 
being that we are in this life. And so I think that's beautiful. And that's all that's needed in order to heal is just simply connecting in. So I hope this episode was helpful, informative, encouraging, inspiring to you as you are on your journey of creating your sacred space. Just know it's whatever it looks like for you. And I hope that I inspired you with some of the things that I do, but also take off the requirements, take off any restrictions and let it be whatever it needs to be for you right now. And that may change, you know, you may need to change or adapt or you may feel a shift in what it is that is needed to support you in your journey. And so I just wanna give you that permission. You have permission to do whatever you feel is most supportive and helpful for you on your journey, on your soul journey. I love you guys so much. Please like, subscribe, and share. Help me spread the word, help me spread love and all of the good things. Thank you so much, you guys.